Hello, bonjour, bienvenidos, benvenuti, welcome to the Music Polyglot channel. Today we are going to have a look at Multiply by Dora Jar. Fantastic song. If you, my friend, are a professional player or a very advanced guitarist, that was all you needed to know. So don't forget to click on the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you want tabs of sheet music, you can check out the description below and then go get them, Tiger. For the rest of us, we'll break everything down in a close up. Okay, so let's begin by talking about the tuning. This is a dad fat tuning. For those not familiar with it, here is how it goes from low to high. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. You can pause the video now and take a minute to get that tuning right and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now that we've got the tuning down, let me show you the first riff, which is the one that you hear in the intro and the verses. So here is how it goes. Three, four. Slow. Okay, so let's break it down. We're playing on the bottom three strings only. And what we do is we play all three strings starting from the sixth open. Okay, one after the other, so that's open sixth, fifth and fourth. Then we get our index on the second fret of the sixth string, we play it. And then we play the open D string, which is the fourth. And then same thing, but ring finger on the fourth fret. And again, open D. So far you have this. Index, open D, third finger, open D. Now without talking. Great. Now we play the open A and we hammer on with the index on the second fret. And then we play the open D again. So. Then we play the fifth string again, and we slide down one fret, and then we play it open again. So. Okay, so far we have and open D there at the end again. And finally, the turnaround is an open A, then the low or the sixth string on the fourth fret, and then you're back at the beginning. Okay, so how's that all put together? Here you go, open fifth fourth fret, and then we're back. Cool. In terms of the picking hand, there really is not one best answer for how to pick it. You can go for alternate picking, which is down, up, down, up, down, up, down etc etc another thing that you can do is um, play a combination of sweep picking and alternate picking to make it a little bit more intuitive which is the way i do it so i go down on the first three notes and then down up down up because that makes it easier to skip the a string which is in between the fourth and the sixth strings that you actually need right so so down 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 up down up down up down down up down up and you're back okay 
It's a little bit fiddly. But whatever you choose to do, the important thing is to keep it consistent. So strive to always do exactly the same thing. It's a much easier way to memorize something and you minimize mistakes as well because your brain gets used to one way of doing it. You have a much better chance of being able to up the tempo without making too many mistakes if your pattern, your picking pattern remains consistent. All that to say, stick to one thing, pick one that works for you and stick to it. Cool, so that's riff number one. Um, uh, thing to mention on the first verse and the intro is that you have a sudden stop at the end of the second um, repetition of the riff. So you have... That's one, this is the second, here. Right, you stop without playing the turnaround. You leave that out and you start again from the beginning. If you listen to the intro in the first verse, you'll see what I mean. And that's just by leaving out the last two notes, the open A and that uh, F sharp, which is on the low sixth string, fourth fret. Cool. Um, and that's the phrase that repeats over the intro and the verses. Let's have a look at the choruses now. Okay, so as you can see there, it sounds like there's two different patterns, first and second times being the same, and then the third time being slightly different. It, and they are in terms of rhythm, harmonic rhythm really, meaning where the chords change, but the chords and the strumming pattern are actually the same. So let's have a look at those chords first. Chord number one. This is a G major, but because of the tuning, it looks like this. So we're going to play this with fingers two, three, and pinky. You'll see why we want to leave the index free in a second. It makes sense, so bear with me for now. Fingers two, three, and pinky, all on the same fifth fret, and the second finger goes on the sixth string, the ring finger, finger three, goes on the fifth string, and the pinky, finger four, goes on the third string, and we play only those bottom four strings. Okay, this is a G major chord, by the way. Then we take the exact same shape up two frets to an A major, exact same shape, and then we take the exact same shape up again to the 12th fret. You can find the 12th fret easily by looking at your double dots, that's the 12th fret. Then down two frets, same shape, and now here. You come down one fret, and we're going to change the shape from major to minor. And we do that by leaving the second and third fingers, which are on the bottom two strings. In place, you only take off the pinky and you replace it with the index one fret lower than your other two. So your index will be on the eighth fret, whereas fingers two and three are on the ninth fret. Okay, that's minor shape in this tuning. This is B minor. Okay, so you have major, 5th fret, 7th fret, 12th fret, 10th fret, down 1 fret and we swap to minor. Cool, so those are all the chords. In terms of the rhythm, we're strumming 8th notes or quavers, which is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and then another bar, but now A, 3 and, and here, one and two and a three and four and a one and two and three and four and. Okay, so that means that on the first chord we have one whole bar and we're just playing those consistent eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. We go up two frets to the second chord and the rhythm stays the same. One and two and three and four and. Now when we go to the third chord on the 12th fret, it goes one and two and a, which is down up. And then you come down two frets, you finish the bar, three and four and a. So we have both chords in the same bar. 
and then down to the B minor, where you revert to the first all eighth note pattern. One and two and three and four. And so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and a three and four and a one and two and three and four and. That happens the first two times. On the third time, it's slightly different just in terms of where we change chords. On the third time you do this, check it out. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Did you catch it? When you hear it, it sounds a little bit strange. I'm not really sure why they did this, but um, what happens is yeah, on the fifth fret, you stay for a whole bar, one and two. And then when you go up to the seventh, it's only two beats, one and two, and up to the twelfth immediately, three and four. And then you come down to the tenth, and there you stay for a whole bar, one and two and three and four. You come down a fret, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four is again one and two and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and this happens every time in every chorus which there's really only two of um on the third time right before you'll go back to that's the chorus. Okay, now let's have a look at the C section, which serves as our outro, which goes like this. etc etc cool so the first line goes okay so that's only the bottom sixth string one and two and and, and that's three open d's two three second fret and then fourth fret and then we have that G major chord, which was the first chord in the choruses. And then down to a minor shape, just like with the B minor in the choruses. Uh, but this time we're on the third and fourth frets, playing this F sharp minor. And the rhythm, one and two and a three and four. And then again, And this time we go up to the seventh fret, which will be an A. And then up two frets, but a minor shape, B minor. And then again. And on the third time where it gets really intense, instead of just playing the bottom sixth string, play the bottom two strings so as to play power chords. And instead of pausing or playing longer notes or rather, just keep playing the eighth notes of quavers like this. You'll notice that I'm now playing all six strings And then you're back onto the first riff again, which serves as the final outro. 
Cool. Remember that if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I read and answer to everything. So there we have it. What a great tune by Dora Jar. If you liked the video and if it helped you, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to the channel so that YouTube notifies you when more videos come up. If you would like sheet music or tabs to this song, that and a lot more is available to all my Patreons on my Patreon page. I'll leave your link in the description below. And finally, if you'd like a one-on-one, -on -one, completely free video call lesson on this song, you can contact me through my website, to which I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Thank you for staying till the end, and I'll see you next time. Hasta la próxima, arrivederci, au revoir.